Hello again, this is a continuation of the um, data requirements lecture for ITEC 455. This will be lecture D, um, DR 3.3 uh, data integrity. So data integrity is one of the many design goals when we're designing data models and data structures to hold data for applications. Uh, there's a number of different goals and uh, for this part of the lecture, we're going to be uh, looking at more specifically at data integrity. Later on, we'll be looking at normalization, in which we address other data design goals like uh, no data redundancy, efficient data entry consistency, and so on. But right now, we're going to look at what's called data integrity. And data integrity is simply about avoiding anomalies in the data and ensuring that the whole data holds together as a coherent whole and not, not as separate pieces. And uh, there's two types of data integrity uh, that we do in this part of the class. Uh, one is called entity integrity and the other one is called referential integrity. So again, there's uh, data integrity, there's two, two main issues. One is uh, entity integrity and the other one is refer referential integrity. So in a database you have a number of tables. You need to inspect each table for entity integrity. In other words, ensure that each table individually, isolated, has entity integrity within that table. Later, we're going to see referential integrity. Referential integrity is not about the tables, but it's about the relationship between tables and how the data in one table is consistent with the data in our table. But for now, let's look at entity integrity, which is inspecting each table in the database. Entity integrity, what we want to, uh, you know, consistent with the uh, relational model, one of the things, what we really want to accomplish with entity, entity integrity is to ensure that every record in the table can be addressed. And we accomplish that by having a unique identifier in each row. And that's what something we were talking about before when we were talking about the, um, the relational properties of, of databases. So essentially, you have data integrity in a table when there's a unique identifier that can, it's almost like having an address. You have a, an address for, for a row in a table. And that unique identifier can be a column or a combination of columns. The important properties are that that identifier is not duplicate and is not null or it's not blank. Just imagine that you, um, you have a house and there's an address in the house. If you want to deliver mail to that house, well, if you find two houses that have the same address, the same number, there's going to be ambiguity. You, you wouldn't know which house is going to get the letter. Similarly, if one of the houses does not have an address, that means it's blank, you cannot, the house will never get letters, will never get mail. So that's the same idea here, is that every row in a data, uh, in a data table has to have a unique identifier that is not duplicate, is not used somewhere else, and it's not known. Okay, so for example, your AUID. Your AUID is a unique identifier for uh, you as a student in the American University system. No AUID can be duplicate, no AUID can be blank. Okay, so that's essentially what, what a primary key does. So having a primary key in a database, uh, in a database table, ensures entity integrity. It enforces the integrity because by definition, a primary key is a field or combination of fields uh, that uniquely identifies the record in the table, okay? And the main re um, requirement for a PK is that it's not duplicate and it's not blank. Now, there might be different, many columns that can be potentially primary keys, but we're going to select one. For example, in the AU system, 
you might have the AUID or your portal ID or your social security number. Those are unique identifiers for each student. So but when you develop an application and you design a, a data model for that application, you pick one. Let's say we pick the AUID as your unique identifier. That becomes the primary key. And for you as a student in the student's table, okay? In some cases, a single key is not enough. As we were seeing before in the line items table, we need an order number and a line item, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, an order number and a, line, uh, and a line item number. And so you need to have two columns in that case. In some cases, you might need three or more. Okay. Now, referential integrity is the second issue. Now, referential integrity it's not about each table. So let me let me back up one second here. In entity integrity, you inspect every single table in the database, and each one of them has to have entity integrity. How do you accomplish it? Is by having a primary key in every table. By having a primary key in every table, you ensure that the the unique identifier for for rows in each of the tables is never duplicate or is never null. So when all the tables have entity integrity, the whole database has entity integrity. If one of the tables doesn't have entity integrity, the database does not have entity integrity. Referential integrity is not about the individual tables, but it's about the relationships that link any pair of tables. Uh, that's where the name referential comes from. It means that we want to ensure that the data in one table is consistent with the data that is in another table. And we enforce that in data modeling with the use of foreign keys. A foreign key enforces referential integrity. Now, this is a technical definition. A foreign key is a field in a table that is a primary key in another table. That is, it must exist in another table. So that's that's why we use primary keys. So, for example, if you have um, orders, the orders are placed by clients. So there's a client ID in the orders table. Well, that client ID must exist in the client's table. And in the client's table, the primary key is client ID. The reason why we want to link to a, a primary key in another table is that ensures that that record that that uh, that uh, record exists because uh, remember a primary key cannot uh, is a unique identifier of a record cannot be duplicate cannot be null so if a foreign key points to a primary key then if it's not there it cannot be validated but if it's there then it can be validated let me explain this in a in a more graphical way so here's um, um, a design uh, we have two tables what is called the orders table, the other one is called the customers table. So we have, each table has a primary key, so that's what gives us uh, entity integrity in the two tables. Customer ID cannot be null or, du or duplicate in the, in the uh, customers table. And similarly, customer ID, I'm sorry, order ID cannot be null or duplicate in the orders table. And those are the primary keys. So customer ID is a foreign key because it points, it points to the customer ID. So when you somebody places an order, let's say this uh, customer ID Hanar wants to place an order, but we're only gonna let that person place an order if there is a record in the customer's table for that customer Hanar, and, and there is. So that's what the foreign key is. So the foreign key has to point to a primary key in another table and help, helps us establish that link, that relationship, okay? So for example, um, this is a data model uh, uh, of a course registration system. We have instructors, we have courses, we have students, we have enrollment. <clears throat> so, these are our entities. The entities are the tables, essentially, you know, represented here in the form of a schema. So we have four entities, instructors, students, courses, enrollments. Okay, and they have their relationships. 
an instructor can teach zero or many courses. A student can enroll in one or many courses. And a course can have enrollments by one or many students. So essentially, this is the data model that represents the data relationships in this uh, data model. And we're using the cross feed notation, which has, um, as you can see in the, uh, when you look at instructors to courses on the left hand side, the symbol is like a little crow feet, you know, those th three little sticks, they look like the feet of, you know, the, uh, the crow's feet. That's why they're called uh, crow's feet. And it was created by a gentleman called Peter Chen, which is why um, um, this is called the Peter Chen notation or the crow's feet notation. The cardinality tells us how many instances of one of one entity can be associated with how many instances of another entity. In the example that we're pointing here on the screen, a course can have zero or many enrollments. That little circle represents a zero, and the little cross feed on the bottom represents many. What that means is that a course can, can have zero enrollments, but can have many too. So it can have zero or many. And if you look at the relationship going the other way, an enrollment has to have one and only one course. We're going to discuss this in more detail in a few minutes. You can represent a data model like this in MS Access. Um, this is a data schema, a schema in MS Access. It's a different notation, but it, it shows the same type of relationship. You have courses, enrollments, instructors, and students. A course can have multiple enrollments. Students can enroll in multiple courses. Uh, an instructor can teach many courses. So it's just a different way of representing data model. We're not going to use this, but if you implement a data model as an access, MS Access database, you'll have this rep representation. If you use a different database, th there's always some data modeling tool in every database product. Okay, so you have your entities have your relationships, and the cardinality, which in this case is one to many. OK, so we're going to stop right here. And uh, in the next uh, uh, section, uh, we're going to talk about conceptual data models. So we're going to put it all together. We're going to go through everything we've talked so far about the relational model, the data modeling, the uh, primary keys, foreign keys, um, and then we're going to put it all together into a data model. And after this, you'll be in good shape to do the, uh, the VCO exercise um, developing data models. So I'll see you in a few minutes.